on this rainy, miserable day, I'm in here um, starting to milk and we've had a busy morning. It is the first day of school for us, so I'm trying to get chores done and so I can get in and we can start school. So last night I was up late reading through all the material, making sure I knew what in the world I was doing. With school starting and the rain happening for this next week, um, it's just a lot of, of going on as far as school starting. That's that's kind of a big deal in a way. Um, it just you know adds a, a couple hours of wonderful time with my kids and, and I love it. Um, but it definitely adds to the day. But um, after we get through the really just sloppy rain, um, there is a lot to be done to get ready for winter. And so there's going to be a lot of cleaning and fixing the roofs. Pig shelters. Underneath the goat feeder, I need to ask Bill to help me get that all um, with the tractor, get it all pushed up. So I really want to try this. This is something I'm not sure I can convince Bill. He's actually talked about it too, but he's pretty worn out. But to buy a um, people around here bale up sandfoin hay. So it's kind of like alfalfa, but not. It is, um, it has pink flowers. It's just gorgeous when they're, it's in full bloom. And cows, cows and goats can eat it um, without getting bloat. And, and, they, and the stems are actually um, a lot less stemmy. And so I think I've read that goats are more likely to eat like most of it or are more of it than wasting it. Um, and so I would love to buy a couple of the big square, uh, round, big round bales. And then what we would do is roll it out into our hay field and then with the baler, um, bale it up into square bales. That way we can put it in the barn here and um, and it would be protected from the, the rain and stuff. We wouldn't have a, we don't have a way really um, to feed, round bales are hard. And so there really isn't a way to feed it well to the goats, um, just the way that we're set up in, in a round bale. And this is something to just be aware of and be careful about. Um, there was a situation of a, a good friends of ours that owned goats and they put a round bale in with their goats and once they got into it and were eating it and you know and once it gets smaller the goat started to probably you know jump up on it and and you know stand up on it to eat and it actually tipped over and and squished one of their goats so you've got to be careful um, and think about that if you're using round bales with goats, just be aware, or any small animal, just be aware of that, that that can and has happened. In the last three days, I have been sharing thoughts on a um, Bible plan that I have been, like a Bible devotional that I've been going through, and I really, really like it. I've actually gone through it several times. And so if you want to watch and listen to the first three days, you can find those on the previous days on my channel. And today is, we're going to fast from the thought that says, I am not loved. Now this reading plan can actually be found if you um, have you version on your phone, you can find this plan and go through it yourself. So you can find it on there. If you type in, um, I believe it's called, fasting 40 days of fasting from negative thinking or something like that so if you type that in you should be able to find it um, but it is really good so today I just wanted to share um, the thoughts from it that are um, we're going to fast from the thought that I am NOT loved love is something that anchors us it anchors us to everything it anchors us to this world it anchors us to um, what happens to us after this world, it anchors us to our family and ourselves. And really, it is the anchor to our relationship with God. But it's funny, in a world where we have so much connection, I believe we're experiencing the worst disconnection ever. And so many people are feeling unloved. And that needs to stop. If you right now are feeling unloved, 
or if you ever have in the past felt unloved, or you know people who feel unloved, please keep these reminders in mind. We need to realize that God loves us. And it is not something that we earn. It's not something at all that we buy. It's something that was given to us. And he has given you the gift of love. And we know this. I mean, he sent his son to die for you, to die for me. And there is no greater love than when a man will give his life up for his friends. That is the deepest, most intimate, most sacrificial love we can ever have or experience. And that has already happened. So we need to, by faith, if we're not feeling loved right now, we need to, by faith, say, I am loved. I think a lot of times, you know, I've read through the story of the crucifixion so many times, and, and it's been a couple years since I've watched The Passion, and that is probably the closest we will ever get to experiencing what Jesus went through. And it wasn't even grueling enough. It, it wouldn't be possible, I don't think, to, to truly capture and show the gruesomeness of what Jesus went through. He was so disfigured, he didn't even look like himself anymore. Um, but that sacrifice was for us. And I think that it's just not that we need to be dwelling on, you know, death and gruesome things, but just the fact that he did that for me. He did that for you. He loves you so much. Last night in Josiah's Action Bible, we're, we're almost to the crucifixion. And so last night was the story of, of go in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus um, you know, went with his friends. And then Peter, James, and John, he pulled off and said, come with me closer. And then Jesus left them and went off to pray. And that's when the, they, I'm sure that there was such a deep sense of oppression in that garden. I think evil was just having a heyday then. And uh, I think there was just so much oppression that just spiritual heaviness that the disciples couldn't even stay awake during Jesus's most oh, anguished time. And that's when Jesus goes into the in, away to pray. And he says, God, oh, Daddy, Abba, Father, I don't want to do this. If there's any other way, please. I, I don't want to, but I will if it's your will. I will do it if it's your will. And that sacrifice was the only way to defeat Satan and dis defeat Satan's evil plan for this world and for you and me. So if you're feeling unloved, know that you are God's beloved. He calls us that and nothing Nothing can separate us from the love of God. You are loved. And knowing that you're loved will help you reject and get rid of those voices of rejection. They may be, maybe they are coming from outside sources, your husband or your brothers or sisters or your friends or whatever. I don't know your situation. But more often than not, I think the voices of rejection are coming from inside. So you have to reject those voices of rejection and, and, and say, no, I am loved. I am God's beloved. He died for me. I am his son or daughter. And I will not accept what you're saying because I know that I am precious and loved and, and full of the Holy Spirit. So don't let those voices get into your head at all, ever. Reject them, send them away, and stand on the promises. In the last couple of days, I've said I've talked about the promises at one point, and there are over 7,000, did I say the number right? Uh, there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible, and we, when those voices come up, we have to remind them of the promises. And we can find those by reading the Word of God. And maybe it is writing them down and meditating. I, I mentioned in the last couple of days about meditating, chewing the cud. We have to keep regurgitating it. So you need to, whether it's putting sticky notes on your mirrors or all over your kitchen or something that says, 
You are loved according to um, these scriptures that you need to get those out there uh, so that you can, can continually remind yourself of it. So part of our school every day is going to be learning how to cook. Mm -hmm. So that will be either learning how to, like right now we're making laundry soap. I make my own laundry soap. Honestly, I, I don't like the smell. I'm very sensitive to smell, so nothing we use, we don't use candles and we don't buy smelly laundry soap and all that. We make our own laundry soap. And so Josiah right now is helping me make that in Hadassah too. And so I'm we'll, scraping it. You're scraping it now, yeah. yeah. So we'll, in the process, and so then also we will um, have kind of a cooking time of meals. You know, learning to cook I think is essential for boys and girls. And um, so we'll also put together like the evening meal in the crock pot or in the instapot and things like that and learning fractions and talking about numbers that way so but today we needed laundry soap so we're making that it is hard grading i have to do all of this i got a lot mm -hmm. so that's soap If you've never heard of Mighty Nest, it's awesome. I'm gonna leave a link below for you to check it out. So basically it's like Christmas every single month. They pick out and send you items that they um, that they love and that they think you'll love. And a lot of times they are um, very um, efficient, energy saving um, items and health items that are made of more natural things so that um, you can bless your family with health and no more chemicals. And so I really love it. Um, so this is one of the things that we got was a germ fighter synergy essential oil roll on and so these guys they i don't know they picked up a bug somewhere and they're kind of biting the snotty noses so i've been putting this on them and, and it seems to be helping so i'm not much into the uh essential oils and um and and not that i i really like essential oils but um it's, it's just one of those things I just haven't done yet. And so it smells great and it's good for them. And, and so just be sure to check that out. When you watched us making the soap, um, that awesome spatula, I have now gotten two sets of those. I actually requested another set because I love them so much. They are awesome. And so that's one of the other things that you can get. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. That is history. That is the beginning, the first thing ever that happened in history. So let's do it on this side again. Okay. Look bad. Can you run bad? It is a rainy day. It is pouring rain right now. So I thought it would be a good day to start building. I really do like to build. I'm not very good at it. But uh, we are kind of remodeling our house and it's very slow. Um, but today I knew that I could fairly simply and quickly not that I'll finish today, but I can get a big portion of it done in making a kitchen table. Like we have our table, our dining room table, and it's our school table as well. But the one that we have, this is the one we have. It's a very old table, and on the floor it has like, um, you know, two legs underneath, but each leg has a no, there's two legs underneath, and then each of those legs have three prongs, like three legs to one leg. And that, I find, makes it really hard to sweep and keep clean. There's so much under there and so much to get trapped under each one of those. And so we are in need of a new table. 
So I'm going to build a table. I found one that is simple. That's what I need is simple and should be fairly quick to put together. But what I'm also doing with this table, because we live in a fairly small home, uh, we live, it's, an, it's about 900 square feet, so it's not very big. And we need every little nook and cranny that we can find. And I love hideaway things. And so what I'm going to do with this table is create uh, like a hidden like door in the middle of it so that we can put like all of our school stuff is out here and all of that school stuff we're going to be able to tuck away inside the table for, so we can use the table for, for, for dinner and we can use it when we have guests and we can use it for other things other than school and then we can make it look nice. Um, so that is what I'm planning and what we're going to be working on today. So the table is right here. So, so basically the foundation is done. It did take all afternoon uh, because I'm not very good at building. I want to be a good builder, but I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> so I actually did have to, um, when I got it set up right, I was like, oh no, two of the legs on one side. I don't know, I had it flat, you know, upside down. I don't know how that happens, but two of the legs were both perfectly crooked <laughs> like they both matched perfectly how crooked they were it's like I gotta redo that so I did just take off um, two of these legs and, and completely straighten them and and put them back on so I feel better about that and so really now all I have to do is go get um, the plywood for under this part this middle part that's gonna be the place where we put our books the kind of the secret um, little place in here so I've got to get the plywood and get that hooked on really well and then um, get the top for it and figure out how to get that all um, hooked in on you know just placed really well um, I think I also will do some sanding um, and then the polyurethane so it's really fairly close to being done although I found that doing the doors they you know with the hinges I find that to be really hard and I guess I got to decide what kind of hinge to use I could use a piano hinge or I've got these other fancy hinges that contort in all different ways but they're really hard to place right but I really like how they work and they're really strong so I'm kind of debating which one to use so I'm excited though I'm close um, It'll probably be another day or two um, before I get it done, but that's close, so I'm excited to start using this. 